Greetings from the Petersburg Church of Christ. We thank you for allowing us into your home today, and we encourage you to open your Bible and follow along with the message that's presented today. We would also encourage you to take notes and send us any questions or comments that you have concerning today's message to the address that will be provided at the end of the lesson. We invite you to join us any opportunity that you have. We meet on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock and Sunday evenings at 6 p.m. We also have a midweek Bible study on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. We are located at 205 Russell Street, just off the south side of the Petersburg Square. I want to give you a lesson this morning <clears throat> that I believe is so necessary. I preached it one night during the meeting at Kimberley. Got your Bible handy? Please look at Matthew, the ninth chapter, beginning at verse 28. In Matthew chapter 9, beginning at verse 28, or verse 27 rather. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith be it unto you. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus straightly charged them, saying, See that no man know it. But they, when they were departed, spread abroad his fame in all that country. What was it these blind men came to Jesus looking for? Well, they came looking for Jesus to get their eyesight, be able to see. The power was in Jesus Christ, and they knew where the power was. And it was Jesus who touched their eyes and made them to see. There's an interesting phrase there that says, according to your faith, be it unto you. Faith is something that comes from God. But each of us has the opportunity to either grow a faith or not have any faith at all. We believe that salvation is something that comes from Jesus Christ. I don't have any salvation for people. You don't have any salvation for people. But to be able to see spiritually, it comes from Jesus Christ. So this establishes here in Matthew chapter 9 that Jesus has the power to give sight to blind people physically like these men. But he also has the power to give us spiritual sight in order to go to heaven when we die. Now, there's another interesting passage in Matthew along this same line. <clears throat> Just a little bit more specific. In the 14th chapter of the book of Matthew, beginning at verse 25, And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. When he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him, and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And, then, and when they were come into the ship, 
the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth thou art the Son of God. There's something very important in that text of Scripture. To our knowledge, there's been only two men who ever walked on the face of the water. Jesus Christ and Simon Peter. Now you can't deny it. That's what it says. Peter may have not walked very long, but he walked on the water. Jesus did without any problem in this world. But notice how this thing comes out. Jesus was walking on the water and Peter looked out there and he saw him and what did Peter say to Jesus? Very important. Look at it. Verse 28. He said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. What did he say? He said, if it be thou, Lord. What was Peter asking for? He was asking for some evidence that Jesus was who he said he was. And what kind of evidence did Peter want? If you believe what the Bible says, and it's there, it says that Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, what did he say? Bid me come unto thee on the water. And Jesus answered one word. He gave the evidence that Peter asked for. Bid me come unto thee on the water. And Jesus said, come. That's all he said. He gave him the evidence. And Peter got down out of the ship and he walked on the water. There is something said there that we need to take to heart. We have been told many things by well-meaning people, and by preachers and teachers, what faith is and how we receive it. Hebrews 11 verse 1 makes it very clear that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen. Peter asked for evidence. Jesus gave it to him. You may have heard this illustration before. The man was building a new house. And the little girl was walking down through the main floor the stair steps to the basement had not been installed yet and the daddy was down in the basement and all you could see was a black hole and he spoke up to his daughter coming down to the hall he said sissy jump into the dark and I'll catch you so she leaped into the dark and her dad caught her and well-meaning people have told us that that's faith. Uh-uh. No. That's not faith. The leap in the dark idea has been manifested by a lot of people, even some in church. God has not asked us to blindly leap into the dark and he'll catch us. He has given us the evidence of who he is. He's not going to ask us to do something foolish, silly, or whatever. He's God. I only know God as a result of knowing what the Bible says. And God has asked us based upon evidence. You remember when Abraham was told by God, to go up on the mountain and offer his son Isaac. 
We're not careful, we'll miss the point. Whenever they got up on the mountain and Isaac had questioned his dad about what they were doing and, and he said, the dad said, where's the sacrifice? What did Abraham tell him? He said, God will provide. Got up there on the mountain. Abraham bound his son raised the knife to kill him and put him on the altar and God stopped him. Now I know that you'll do what I tell you to do. What evidence was given to Abraham? Have you read your Bible very much along that line? Scripture reading this morning, the Bible study hour, was Galatians chapter 3, about the first 14, 15 verses. And one of those verses says that the gospel was first preached to Abraham. What's the gospel? Death, burial, resurrection of Jesus. Before Abraham went up on the mountain, to offer Isaac, he knew, study your Bible a little bit, Hebrews 11, Hebrews 13. He knew the evidence had already been given by God that he could raise him from the dead. So Abraham did exactly what God told him to do because he had been given the evidence of the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, even before he went up there. What's interesting is that Mount Moriah, where he offered Isaac, was one of the mountains of Moriah. Do you know what Mount Calvary was where Jesus was offered? One of the mountains of Moriah. Interesting. God has given us the facts, the evidence, whereby we can believe, we can depend on what God has said because he's given us the evidence. He's not asked us to do something crazy like jump into the dark. That's not faith. Four little old simple points this morning. Without the faith that comes from Christ, it's impossible to please him. Without the faith that is for Christ, it is impossible to please him. Without the faith that is with Christ, it is impossible to please him. Without the faith that is in Christ, it's impossible to please him. Where does faith come from? Where did you get yours? Did you inherit it from two or three generations behind you? I believe you need to think a little bit deeper than that. It was Jesus who said, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. For they are they that testify of me, and you will not come to me that you might have life. John 5, 39, 40. What did Jesus say? Search the scriptures. What's in the scriptures? The doctrine of eternal life. What can you find by searching the scriptures? You can find Jesus Christ. That's what you can find. So we ask the sincere question. Where did your faith come from? Did it come from Christ? We've quoted verses for years, and I'm afraid they have just been a text to think about. We don't realize the gravity of what they say. John 6, about verse 45, says that they shall all be taught of God. And those who have learned of the Father will come unto me, Jesus said. Well, what's that saying? If we receive the instructions of what the Bible says... We can have a faith that will bring us to God. Romans 10 verse 17. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 1 verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth, Jew first and also to the Greek. The power of God unto salvation is what? The gospel. That's where we get our faith. 
It was interesting on GBN this morning on TV, David Smith was talking about how that the Book of Mormon is not the place to get your faith. Mormonism did not start until about 1830. The Bible makes it very clear that we are complete in Christ. The other testament of Jesus Christ, they say, is where you get your faith. It won't work. Because people were getting their faith from Christ generations all along before that book ever came along. There are all kinds of books out here that people are claiming they get their faith from. You can't get your faith from Muhammad in the Koran. The prayer books, the creed books, the catechisms, a lot of the Bibles that people are reading and studying today are not honest translations, they're paraphrases, and they've got their faith from something that won't produce faith. Where did you get your faith from? From Jesus Christ. That's where it comes from. If you didn't get yours from Christ, it won't do you any good. Number two. Without the faith that is for Christ, it's impossible to please him. One of the most beautiful passages in all the Bible... I've underlined it, wore it out in my Bible for many, many years. Listen to what it says. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, beginning at verse 14. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge, that if one died for all, then were all dead, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Now think about what that says. Who is it that died for all of us? Jesus Christ died for you and for me, all of us in this building, everybody in the whole world. That he died for all. Now listen to the results of that kind of truth. If you believe that with all your heart. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Who do we live for? What's our faith for? It must be for him who arose from the dead. Now we all know what a toothbrush is for. Did you ever lose your toothbrush and not have one at all to brush your teeth with? I'm lost without a hairbrush. I keep a hairbrush in every car. I know what a hairbrush is for. It is to brush your hair and to keep your hair in place. Many people are very particular about that. I am. I know what a, what a toothbrush is for. I know what a hairbrush is for. What's a pot and a pan for? Cook beans and potatoes and all kinds of vegetables. That's what pots and pans are for. There's another question. What are you for? What's your purpose? What do you exist for? Is it for Christ? Is it for the salvation of people's souls? Old Elvis had a good song years ago. What are you living for? What are you living for? If your faith and your lifestyle and your being here on the earth is not for Jesus Christ, your faith's not worth a dime. Not worth a dime. What's your faith for? Must be for Christ. Another interesting point. Without the faith that is with Christ. Somebody said, well, you're just playing on word. No, if you believe what the Bible says, it makes it a, a distinction. We're to live for Christ. We're to get our faith from him. We're to take him with us wherever we go. 
I'm glad the Bible says that. There are many passages in the Bible that suggest to us that the faith that we have in Jesus Christ will allow us to take him with us. Look at Acts chapter 4, beginning there about verse 11. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. What was it these people here who were around these men noticed? That they had been with Jesus. To be with Jesus is important. If you want to help other people learn the truth, if you want to help people uh, be led in the direction of Christ and the salvation of their souls, you need to take him with you. The Great Commission is astounding when you look at it close. Jesus claimed that all power and authority has been given unto me in heaven and earth. He said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them whatsoever things I've commanded you, and lo, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. Is it possible to have Jesus with us and we not even know it? Yes. Where's you? What are you talking about, Brother Byrne? Luke chapter 24, on the road to Emmaus. These people were walking along, talking about what had happened in those days. As someone came and walked along with them, their eyes were beholden. They didn't know who it was. And Jesus finally revealed himself to them. This was just after he rose from the dead. There are many occasions when we need to recognize that our lives with Christ can be so meaningful and helpful if we'll just recognize it. Sometimes we go through some hard situations in life. And our faith trembles and we don't know which way to go. and So we endure it and we come out on the other side and then we stop and think about what all had happened and what all had, uh, had come about. And we realize that the Lord was with us and helped us and guided us and took us through that situation. The kind of faith that is alive is the faith that comes from Christ. It's for Christ. And it's with Christ. And I guarantee you, You'll never hear this last point preached anywhere except in the Lord's church. The nominations will not preach it. But it's in there. I didn't write the book. It's my job to preach it just like it is. The Apostle Paul, inspired of the Holy Spirit, four times in his writings to Timothy made a very simple statement. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 13 verse 14 and I won't read each one of these verses because they practically say the same thing but notice what it says. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 14 says and the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and and love which is in Christ Jesus. Where is faith and love? Paul told Timothy that it's in Christ Jesus. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 13. For they that have used the office of a deacon well purchase to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in 
Christ Jesus. Where is the faith that's alive and useful? It's in Christ Jesus. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 13. Let's read verse 12 while we're at it. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. If you look across the page there in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 15, he said it again. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Four times the Holy Spirit through Paul to Timothy told us where faith is. And where did he say it was? In Christ. That's not hard. Simple as pie. You're either in Christ or you're out of Christ. The faith that saves is found in Christ. Ephesians 4 verse 5 says there's one faith. How many? One. Not two. Not three. Not three hundred. Not three thousand. The faith that saves is one. Where is it? In Christ. Now if you listen to TV very much and you listen to the religious programming and you pay attention to what they say about their altar calls and what to do to be saved they'll give you all kinds of ideas about how you can be in Christ. Did you realize that the Bible three times tells you how you can get into Christ? Galatians 3 27, Romans 6 3 and 4, 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13. They all practically say the same thing. Why is it you never hear over national programming? Why is it you never hear what the Bible says about how you can get into Christ? Because they don't believe it. They've done, reworded it, throwed it away canceled it out when the Bible says very clear for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ how do you get into Christ? baptized into Christ Galatians 3.27 Romans 6.3 and 4 makes it clear that baptism is that act of God that brings a person into the death of Jesus Baptism brings us into Christ. And then the other verse says, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13, For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. How do you get into the body of Christ? Baptized into it. But the world says, In order to be in Christ, all you simply do is call on the name of the Lord. You'll be saved. Well, you know, if you believe what the Bible says, and you're going to get your faith from Christ, and you're living your life for Christ, and you're taking him with you wherever you go. Is there any place in your activities of the day, Monday through Saturday, that you would be ashamed to take Christ with you? Made it. Think about it. Would you want Christ with you when... You were reading that certain publication or looking at that terrible TV scene, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Stop and come to grips with it. The faith that saves is an everyday thing. 
It's from Christ, it's for Christ, it's with Christ, it is in Christ, or you don't have any faith at all. Where's your faith today? Are you a Christian? Have you obeyed the gospel of Christ? Are you a church warming, are you a bench warming Christian on Sunday? And anybody in the world would never know you from anybody else in the world the rest of the week. Come to grips with this. If our faith will save us, it comes from Christ, it's for Christ, it's with Christ, it's in Christ. And may God help us to have that kind of faith. Will you come to Jesus while we stand together and sing? If you have questions or comments concerning today's lesson, you may send those to Petersburg Church of Christ. 205 Russell Street, Petersburg, Tennessee, 37144. Or you may email us at Petersburg Church of Christ at hotmail.com. You may also request a copy of today's lesson through the same method. Be sure to include today's date along with the station on which this program aired and the title of the lesson. We hope to see you again next week right here on this station at the same time.